How do you make a MIDI orchestra sound real using as few plugins as possible? Let's talk about it. Hi, this is Steven Malin at stevenmalin.com. And today we are looking at how to transform a MIDI orchestra into sounding as real as possible using only six waves plugins. Now, so many composers have recently been talking about and asking questions about how to make their piece of music sound as real as possible using a bunch of different plugins from different companies, orchestral libraries. And this question just keeps coming up about how to mix in a, an efficient way, but also how to achieve that Hollywood polished production sound. So today we're gonna to be looking at six plugins that allow you to do this as quickly as possible, but also with as much control as possible. And make sure you stick through to the end where I'm gonna share one free plugin that you can add today to your mixes to sound even more epic and realistic, especially for those of you who write for movie trailers and promos. So make sure you stick around to the end. Today we're looking at a recent trailer track that I wrote primarily for the Mulan trailer, the theatrical trailer of two and a half minute length. This track I wrote to be part of a library, a music library that bigger companies like Disney will come in and they will license these tracks to use in their trailers. And so I specifically wanted to use a live choir for this track. And so if you take a look at the session from Digital Performer that I started with, it is all MIDI orchestra with a little bit of live choir where I reached out to a bunch of friends and recorded a male choir, which I added with audio tracks at the end. Let's take a quick listen to the track without any mixing plugins whatsoever, except for a limiter on the master bus, the stereo out track, just to prevent the volume from clashing. Let's listen to it with the six waves mixing plugins on the stereo out and listen to how different it sounds. So my purpose here today is not to overwhelm you with a ton of plugins, but rather to give you a mindset and a chain order to go in to make your mixes sound better. However, if you do happen to grab these Waves plugins, I do want to let you know that over the next several days, there is a Halloween sale going on. Make sure you check the description below for the full details on that and how to take advantage of that. So let's take a look at each of the plugins to see what they actually do, why I chose them, and how you can achieve that same epic, grand, movie trailer style, huge sound, a realistic MIDI orchestra sound 
for yourself. So let's take a look. Let's go back to the chain order here. You'll notice right off the bat that my final plugin within my stereo out is called the Voxing Go Recorder plugin. And this is simply there just so that you can hear my audio right now from my DAW session. So we can ignore that. That has no bearing on the actual sound quality of anything that you're going to hear. Aside from that, there are a lot of plugins here and not every mix is going to require all of these. But I feel like if you're going for a realistic MIDI orchestra sound, these are the steps to go through to make sure that you're getting that realism that we're seeking. So let's walk through. So the first one is the API 550. This is an EQ. We have an API 2500, which is a compressor, a multi-brand compressor. We have the Kramer tape which is an analog style recording plugin that it basically adds some fuzz. It adds some white noise that emulates the recording of a real orchestra in a real room. So it adds some of that, that noise in the background. We have the IR1, which is a reverb plugin. We have the NLS bus master plugin, which stands for nonlinear summer. And what this does is it essentially adds a little bit of drive to the entire piece of music and actually just having this plugin on the master, even if I were to set the drive to zero, you'd still hear a little bit of a coloring to the sound. And then we have the L2 Ultra Maximizer. And you may have seen me use the L1 Ultra Maximizer before. Uh, this one has a little bit more details going on. And I chose in this instance to set the out, like any limiter, to negative 0.1 dB so that any of the sound that comes through, if it gets super loud all of a sudden, it kind of, it's what we call like a brick wall limiter. It just, it hits that wall and no sound escapes beyond that point. So this track will never get louder than negative 0.1, which is good because if you hit zero and above, then you're going to start peaking, getting those nasty pops. So I'm glad that we have that on there. And then the threshold over here, I can drag down to increase the overall volume after it's been squished down. So in this case, negative 2.9, which means it's essentially 3 dB louder than what it would be before it's squished. So this allows us to get our loudness back if we have to compress some things. And especially in this large epic music, it's really important to squish down and to compress. So let's walk through each one very briefly and audition to see how my changes, how these additions actually change the sound. So if I scroll back to that section that we were listening to, here's a little snippet of the track again with all of the plugins bypassed. They're all off. Here's what it sounds like. It sounds okay, but it's kind of a flat, dull, non-interesting, not colorful kind of sound. So as soon as we add the API, the 550, specifically the 550A, you can choose between the 550A and the B. The A has three knobs, the B has four knobs. So if you want a quicker, easier sound, use the A. It's an equalizer. So what makes this different than say the Pro-Q equalizer that I use a ton from FabFilter, that one is a very beautiful um, visual, representation of the sound and you can go in there and move your curves and that kind of stuff but it doesn't color the sound it doesn't actually give it an analog warmth so i love plugins that add the analog warmth so the api 550a and b they both have this little analog um, toggle i would definitely turn that on and then what you do is you go through here and this says high frequency mid frequency and low frequency you go through and you use these knobs either plus or minus, and you set it to something. So in this case, high frequency, I decided to move it up. Mid frequencies, I went down. Low frequencies, I went up. That's kind of a traditional epic music rule of thumb is you want more highs, more lows, less mids. And then within this little blue knob on each of them, you can actually decide where that boost or cut will start. So I like to keep it right there in the middle. That way it's you can noticeably hear the difference. You could, you could play around this for a long time and not really hear a difference um, if you're not kind of setting some limitations for yourself about what you want to do. We have a couple more knobs down here to choose um, if you want to change the curve and that kind of thing, but I want to keep it very simple for today. So listen to that exact same section with the changes. 
And I'm gonna turn off and on so that we can hear the by so here's the bypass. And then if I turn it back on. So to my ears, I hear a very noticeable difference in the high range, specifically the strings, the high violins. They're a lot more pronounced. The low end, like the big hits of the percussion are much more pr pronounced. They're thicker, they're wider, they have more oomph to them when the plugin is on. So here it is one more time. So to my ears, it's a very noticeable difference and it helps it feel more realistic. But that by itself is not enough because it, we haven't done some of the other processing to it. So now let's take a look at the API 2500. And I like using these in conjunction with one another to try to make things sound real because they're they're kind of sisters. They're, they're two plugins that work really well together. They have the same um, coloring. So same thing with this one, I'm gonna turn the analog on. This is a multi-band compressor. So just like any compressor, we have our threshold, attack, ratio, and release. And then you can choose the tone. And this is pretty cool because if this was an extreme like electronic piece that has a lot of dynamic contrast, then you'd wanna use something like the loud function. But this one's kind of medium. It has slight soft, slight loud. There's not, it, but what we want what to do is create more dynamic contrast. And the compressor takes all of the low, the lowest lows, the highest highs, and it squishes them as much as we want them to. So I'm not doing anything extreme here, but what it's doing is it's letting like my little piano solo at the beginning be almost as loud as the loudest loud. Right, we need those two moments to really have the same amount of volume, the same amount of loudness. So this really helps with that. So you'll notice if I were to turn the compressor off and play that same part. It sure is loud, but then look how soft the piano is. So it's missing that cohesion between them. And by putting a colorful compressor, it allows us to have this little analog button that it's adding the warmth across the board and it helps to kind of uh, meld them together. So my threshold is pretty low, it's only plus four so that anything above that point is gonna be squished down. So it's not that that extreme. My attack is a little bit off zero. My ratio is a little bit higher than say one, one to one ratio. It's a little bit higher, so it's at two one. And then my release is pretty significant because there are moments where the percussion hits and you want the compressor to kind of taper off over time. You don't want it to be a smack done, right? You don't want the volume to, to kind of uh, choke it so that's why we use a release that's a little bit longer and again you could use you could use any compressor you want but you're not going to get the color and that's what's so unique about the the api series which is why so many people use these because um, it is modeled after the actual hardware which is very very high end the next item on the list is the kramer tape so i love this thing because if you record an orchestra at least back in the the old days of film and such you always recorded on tape. So you'll notice that if I were to just go over to this little knob and turn it up, you can actually hear the fuzz. And that's a little more extreme than I want it to be. So the two knobs I like to play with here are the noise and the record level. And you see how this little button it links the two together. So I can go up like this. So that's way too much. So for this track, I put somewhere in the six to nine range because they are linked together. And then the noise, I turn it down to like 10 to 15, that's a negative 10 to 15. And that way you can kind of hear it when things get quiet. So listen to the very beginning, which is a little piano solo. And I like having that tape fuzz. Here's what happens if I turn it off. It's very digital. Not bad without it, but it just adds so much more humanity to it to have that breath. It's also pretty noticeable in the loudest of loud sections. Like those big 
release moments, it actually helps a lot as well. And then moving on here, we have the IR1. I like this a lot. Um, this is like an age old plugin. It's not new at all, but um, the IR1 is a convolution reverb plugin. Uh, a lot of people use this. And what's interesting is it's so powerful. It, it's very, very um, poignant. So you don't need a lot of it. So you notice on this master track, I only put 6%. So there's a little slider here for dry wet. You can go all, all the way up to 100%. You can choose the size of the room. You can even play around with this little curve here to get exactly what you want. Um, so just like every plugin with waves, it has a color to it. So this is not useful in every situation, not so much electronic music, but within orchestral music, it's a very good plugin for reverb. Um, and so I just put 6% and listen to what 6% does. It's pretty significant. So here it is without the plugin. And then here it is with the plugin. Now here, I'll turn it up just so we can hear the difference. I'm gonna crank this up way beyond 6% so you can really hear it. And that's at just a size 1.27. You can play with that way more than I have, but I just wanted something subtle. It's kind of a cohesion, especially now that I've you know bounced out stems, audio tracks of all the MIDI. It allows me to just have a better glue of everything. Okay, so the next plugin I wanna take a look at is the NLS, the Nonlinear Summer. Now, this is not a very complicated plugin. It's quite simple. You have three consoles we can choose between. I chose the mic style. I like this one the best. These are based off of three kind of legendary consoles. Um, and without getting to the weeds of this, it's, it just helps. It adds more analog goodness to the mix and it allows you to um, put this little drive here. And even at a 3.0 drive, it adds it's subtle, but it adds a little bit more fullness to the mix. So here it is with it and without it. I'll go to a louder section. it essentially kind of adds more of that epic feel. And then the last element here is an ultra maximizer. We talked about it briefly, but essentially it's, it's the L2 ultra maximizer. Uh, this is what you use when you want things to sound louder. So we always need a limiter. So you can just use the L1 limiter if you want a negative 0.1 dB out ceiling that just stops the sound, brick wall limiter. But if we want things to be louder, and right now this track is loud, but it's not loud enough, we can put this um, threshold, we can drag it down from zero and you can kind of hear, yeah, it could get crazy. That'll really break your ears. Um, but really something small like negative 2.9 is a great place to stay. I'm not going to mess with any other parameters. And even that small 3 dB boost makes a big difference. Here, let's listen to it. And so I feel like even with just those six plugins that this is complete, that this sounds fantastic. It really feels full, it feels rich, it feels real. Um, thanks to these analog plugins and great samples to start with. And of course, anytime you add live elements, such as a live choir, it's just gonna up the ante that much more, up the quality, the production level. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's it sounds great. So one more, Little free tip I want to add here is the free plugin OTT, which stands for Over the Top by Xfer. So this is something that you can add to any of your epic mixes, and it's going to add that extra layer to just give it even more epic 
sauce. I don't know. Uh, and the reason is because this is a multi-band upwards and downwards compressor. So we've already compressed everything. But what this does is it squeezes just that last little bit of juice out of it because I can go over here to my high, crank it up, mids, crank it down, lows, crank it up. And even with just a small percentage of 33% upward, 40% downward, and we're talking 8% depth, 5% time, we're not, we're not going anywhere super high, but what it does is it, it really makes a big difference to the tone quality. So when I turn this off, you'll notice how everything sounds very full and rich. When I turn this on, Again, free plugin. Look how good this is. It squeezes it and makes it sound a little bit more um, maybe appropriate for a phone or for a movie theater, like an actual surround sound theater, which really focuses on the subwoofers and the highs. Listen to the difference. the most difference is in the huge drums on the bottom is it allows these boo, boo, just these huge thick pounding percussion and you could certainly put this on just a percussion if you want it there but I like how it just affects everything it's a quick and easy way just to get a, an even richer sound um, a very focused sound this wouldn't necessarily work with um, more organic type orchestral music, but for more epic stuff with the big percussion and choir, yeah, it really does add a lot. Cool. Thanks guys for hanging out. I hope this was helpful for you. Make sure you like the video and hit that subscribe button if you want more content like this. And I want you to comment below which of these mixing plugins do you think are going to be the most useful for you. Once again, these are all Waves plugins. Make sure you take full advantage of the Halloween sale going on for the next few days. It is 31% off everything in the store. So this is a great time to check out some of the bundles. And there's going to be all the links below that you can check out. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this. Let's take a listen to the final track with all the plugins on so we can see how everything's working together. Thanks for being a part, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you.